That was the reality check that I needed that night. I, I really did. I'm so nervous slash excited to make this video. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Hello, my name is Jacqueline, if you're new here. And today we're gonna be reacting to cringy celebrity interviews. The catch is that the cringe part of it does not come from the celebrities or the guests in these videos. It comes from me. If you guys didn't know, I also host things and do interviews with artists and up and coming talent or celebrities and do red carpets. And I love doing that. That is so much fun to me. But I I've definitely had my fair share of learning experiences slash embarrassing myself on live TV, on live streams, on video, and just things that will live forever, which you know, you can't win them all. So I'm gonna go onto YouTube and we're gonna go in order, I think from my first interview, maybe to the most recent or maybe to the most cringy, we'll see, we'll see where this takes us. I do have a playlist on my YouTube channel I think it's called, is it just called interviews? Oh, this is convenient. I do have a playlist called interviews on my channel. So I'll link the whole playlist down below in case you wanna see these videos in its entirety and laugh. I was gonna say laugh with me, but we're gonna be laughing at me, let's be clear. Also, before we hop into it, I'm sure some people will ask like how I get to do this. And honestly, good question because sometimes I don't really know. Anyways, long story long, my multi-channel network on YouTube is Much Studios. And that's also like Much Music here in Canada, AKA like MTV Canada. And I'm really lucky that they're super supportive and they know that I've always wanted to host and do interviews. So I get to send them pitches to different music labels when different artists are coming into the building or when they're in town doing concerts or shows or doing doing press or any reason like that. So these are some of the interviews that have come to life through that. Also, some of these are from the MMBAs, which is the Much Music Video Awards here in Toronto, which is also just the funniest full circle moment because I grew up going to the Much Music Video Awards as a fan and watched the whole award show like as a fan in the audience. So that's always so funny because there's definitely footage of me when I'm like 12 years old wearing like fan t-shirts. So it really is just the funniest story that they let me on the red carpet and interview and host things. That is always a pinch me moment. Anyways, let's dive into to my very first interview. I'm, ah, this is gonna be interesting. This is the very first time I think I ever interviewed anyone and this was at the MMBAs. I was 18. Let's find this. Uh, you got five seconds to answer these three questions. Three Canadian dishes. Poutine? Uh, oh no. Hey guys, it's Jacqueline Forbes. I'm here at the 2016 iHeartRadio MMBAs. We're at the one-on-one -on -one suite, and we're going to be playing the five-second challenge. So people are going to have five seconds to answer the question. Let's see who's the best at this. Okay, three French words. Okay, I'm just going to pause this right there. You can see kind of like how nervous I am in my eyes. So this basically was set up at the Much Music Video Awards. So this is back in, was this 2017? Oh my gosh, 2016. Yeah, I was a baby here. So this was set up inside the Much Music Video Awards. So as the award show was going on, like artists are coming through, partying, going to their green rooms, you know, in and out, doing their things. There's different press rooms as well. So we were stationed as one of like the little press rooms. So publicists would bring their talent through, kind of come in, do interviews, things like that. So I was also sharing the space with the MTV for a team and they were doing another like separate video in the same set though. So they would come in and do their bit first. So it was kind of nice for me because I got to see the talent and kind of like their vibe and get like a feel for them, I guess, before I had to hop in there. So that was kind of nice, um, especially the fact that these were my first interviews ever And like, what's so funny is, honestly, I feel really grateful that the team at Much even let me do this because I really had no, no resume to back it up why I should be qualified to do this. I just was like, guys, I need to do this. I'm gonna do a good job, let me do this. And they luckily trusted me. But I remember the whole time, even like the producers who were there with me and helping me out and sh the people who were shooting it, they were kind of like prepping me and saying, hey, like we might not even get anyone in this room. Like there's no talent that is scheduled to even necessarily come in here. It's just kind of like if they're floating through and we have the time, we'll shoot it. But if not, like don't get your hopes up. So I honestly kind of was going into it like, hey, it might not even happen. We might not even get great guests. And oftentimes at events or award shows like this, like you have like the headlining talent, the performers, or the people that are presenting. But then there's also a bunch of other like celebrities or artists who are just attending and just kind of going for the party and they're not really like the face of the show. So I was kind of expecting to get the people that weren't like the main, main headliners slash like the hosts or any big names, if that makes any sense. I also just remember, I did like obviously all my own hair and makeup for this and bought my own dress. And <laughs> I remember like putting like body glitter all over my arms thinking I was like a million bucks and I was feeling so good. But oh my gosh, those eyebrows need major help. Anyway. 
I digress. So I'm sitting in the room and we're just kind of sitting quietly. Like it's not as glamorous as you think it would be. And we get a knock on the door. The producer kind of runs out, starts talking to someone. This person's publicist walks in first and goes, okay, Haley Baldwin's coming in. No questions about Bieber. She's coming in now. And I'm like, Haley Baldwin? Like, oh, what? This is obviously before she was a Bieber. And also LOL the fact that her publicist came in and said I couldn't ask any questions about Justin Bieber. I don't even think at the time, I mean, I don't know if they were dating, maybe they were a thing before, but I was like, yes, got it. I won't ask any questions. I wasn't planning on doing that anyways, ma'am. Like, it's all good. Then Haley Baldwin walks in and she was so, so lovely. And I always have like a soft spot in my heart for her because she was so sweet and very genuine, if that makes any sense. Like she came in and was like, hello. Like we kind of gave her the rundown. So. So I always have a very soft spot in my heart for her because she was just truly beyond so sweet. And I probably, I don't know, I probably look like an idiot slash she probably knew that I didn't know what I was doing, but she was still super gracious. And um, that was like, I don't know, it set the tone for the evening and she left and I was like, did I just get to interview Haley Baldwin? So anyways, she's super lovely and that was the best way to start off any interviewing ever. Set the bar high, that's for sure. Three things you bring in an igloo. A uh, sleeping bag, a pair of Ugg boots, and a very warm hoodie. Three sets of twins. What? What are you, what are you asking me? <laughs> Three sets of twins. Like, uh, right. Sarah and Tegan? Oh my god, it's actually so embarrassing watching yourself back. Oh baby. Honestly, what was so great about the little setup that we were doing, it was literally like the five second challenge. Like it wasn't a proper interview with like these intense questions. Sure, I was prepped on everyone that we could potentially have, but with like a more game style interview, I don't even call it an interview, a more game style video like we were shooting, it's way less pressure on me, which again, for a very first interview, I was very grateful that that was what I got to start out with because it was literally just like name three things name and like half of the things were related to either Canadian things or related to the, the show that night but I remember them telling me before I started because like I wasn't even used to holding a mic honestly and they're like you have to make sure you like are properly letting people speak and I sometimes can get so focused or especially at the beginning I would just be like oh yeah I'm just talking I'm holding the mic here and forget to put it to the other person's mouth so it's so funny you see me I'm like very consciously like when they're talking and I'm like putting it like in their mouth. Oh my God. Last three people you texted. Ooh, my cousin. Uh, oh, I can't say. Um, my sister and I think that's time, that's time. Okay, that moment was actually so funny. She clearly says into the mic, oh, I can't say that one. So I remember the comments at the time, everyone was speculating. They're like, oh my God, it was Justin Bieber. And you know what? Maybe that's why I was told I couldn't talk about Bieber, but I'm like, she alluded to it. Actually, I do remember too. Okay, so since we had a ton of more Canadian themed questions and a lot of the guests at the MMBAs, I mean, we do have a lot of Canadians, but there's also a lot of Americans that attend as well. Anyway, so a lot of the questions were kind of like Canadian trivia and like more Canadian centered. I remember there was some type of question. I don't really remember how it was worded, but it was something to the effect of like three Canadian artists that isn't Drake, Justin Bieber, or... I forget who else it was at the time, but there was an actual Justin Bieber question that wasn't necessarily for her, but it was just on like the cue cards of general questions. And I remember at one point I looked down at the cue cards for like the next question and I was like, oh my God, no, this one says like Bieber, I can't ask that. So I was like, just, just make up a new question, it's fine. And <laughs> I was like so nervous. I didn't want to like make anyone mad and I didn't, I don't know, the publicist just, she scared me. Not that she was a mean woman at all. I was just like, I didn't want to offend anyone or say the wrong thing. I was just nervous, you know, it was my first time. Things that rhyme with hex. Specs, Lex, Tex. Oh, you played that pretty safe, okay. Next one. Sex. <laughs> Next one, three terms that Drake has coined. Six? The six? Mm -hmm. uh, Five seconds. You're all I got your high love and emotion. I don't know, I don't know. That'll count. Well, like, like the six, we got like, start from the bottom, YOLO, I don't know. I don't know, we did it. Three Canadian animals. That are only indigenous to Canada? You're getting too specific with this. Three animals that could be from Canada, like okay, okay. Right. a blue jay, um, a wallaby, and a nosferatu. Okay, okay. I was like thinking beaver, polar bears, but that works too. Polar bears. Three Canadian dishes. Moose. Yeah, moose. Damn it. Moose, beavers. <laughs> oh. Okay, next one. Oh my god, this is so embarrassing. I think it's one of the
of those things too, honestly. Obviously, whenever you watch yourself back, you think what you're doing is 10 times worse. I can look back and be so hypercritical of myself and be like, Jacqueline, why are you being so serious? Why are your eyebrows so frowny? Like, that's just not the vibe. But you know what? Again, Tyler was such a great sport and he was super friendly. And I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, he gave us so much time. Like, he was in no rush to get out. And it's always nice, I feel like, when it can be stressful, especially when a lot of these people have more time constraints or you have publicists knocking on the door being like, okay, they have two minutes and then they're out kind of thing, which I get as part of the job. But I remember him specifically, he was like super chill, was not in a rush and was like taking his time, which that's always, it's always nice, especially on my end to feel like the person is enjoying being there versus like someone who you know just wants to like get out. Three Canadian dishes of food. Harvey's hamburgers, Swiss chalet, Yes, I think you killed that last one. He actually killed the answers, I will say. He knew his stuff. Three swear words. Uh, honestly, such good memories though. I definitely feel very lucky that that was like my first experience and nothing went horribly wrong, but yeah. Okay, next up, I think this is going in chronological order. This was actually my first proper like sit down boy band interview and this was with Why Don't We? And we actually filmed this at YouTube Space Toronto, which had a super cool like subway TTC set, which was really fun. And yeah, I remember going into this. I wasn't particularly like nervous. I was feeling pretty comfortable and I had, you know, done all my research and felt really good with, again, we were doing like another kind of game. So it was kind of like low pressure in that sense. Um, but I was feeling really good going into it. But I remember it kind of hit me when I was walking into the YouTube space. I think Why Don't We was doing, they had like a secret session or an acoustic set or like some little meet and greet with some of their fans. And I'm very well aware of the intensity of, you know, fandoms, especially around boy bands. And I kind of like, when I walked in there and I saw so many fans sitting outside and just like so many people so excited and so intense, it was like, oh crap, this is like, I don't want to mess this up and I don't want to let like a fandom down or make anyone mad so it just kind of hit me in that moment I was like oh right don't screw this up most likely to forget the lyrics while performing reveal what do you do though when you forget the lyrics you just like make it up your little dance move you just kind of like played off like it was meant to happen okay I'm gonna pause right here because this is actually all flooding back to me actually what happened so I remember we had a really small little team this day it was three people including myself the videographer and kind of producer he was like I only have three mics and I was like what are we gonna do there's there's you know five of them four of them Oh, that no there's five of them whoa I had a moment I was like what are we gonna do there's five of them and I just remember back in my you know I was a huge One Direction fan back in my day and I remember watching videos and I would always hate when interviewers wouldn't have a mic for each of them I just thought that that was like not the energy and then some people wouldn't get to talk and it just didn't feel right so I was like oh no what are we gonna do this is so embarrassing I don't have enough mics for them I mean I, I told the guys before I was like hey like if you don't mind just like sharing slash like whatever if you're gonna talk if so Someone else is gonna talk, hand it over kind of thing. I think we just got so into the game that some of them had forgotten. And there was moments that I think they ended up having some audio issues because some things weren't like caught on camera. Yeah, it was like good overall though, honestly, for the most part. I feel like it can be hard in any situation, especially when you have five separate people and they're all really high energy and making sure that we get every single moment. But honestly, shout out to the videographer Max that day because I think he did a really good job at making it all happen. Who's the most likely to delete all of their social media unannounced? Jonah is from Minnesota. Do you have to say about this? I kind of envy it sometimes how unattached he can be from it because it, it can take up so much. This was honestly such a good reminder also to know your shot. I didn't realize that day. I wasn't even thinking how wide the shot would be. AKA like it would be a full body because there's so many people that were sitting beside. And I just, this whole video, I can't stop but staring at the fact that it looks like I'm going to, you know, have a crotch shot on camera. So that was again, another learning experience for me. Be very mindful of your wardrobe choices and what the shot will be. Again, learning, we're all learning. This is the early days. Uh, oh, subway session. We are not singers, sorry. Oh, right, you can't do that, not on the spot. Look at us. Oh my god, I can't watch this anymore. I'm just sitting there as they're singing and I'm like, don't know what to do now. 
Okay, this is enough. Honestly, overall, again, those guys were great. Nothing bad to say. Actually, I have to say this overall because I feel like this is a question that I get a lot from people in my real life and sometimes on YouTube. You guys will be like, who's the worst person you've ever interviewed or who was the biggest diva or who's whatever. And honestly, for the most part, every interview or interaction that I've had, I got no tea to spill, anything like that. I mean, one, something to be noted is a lot of these things are professional engagements. They know they're being on camera and people know they're getting interviewed, but I've, I've been really fortunate that everyone has been very welcoming and super lovely. And honestly, that is the honest truth. So thank you to anyone who has ever been nice to me and let me interview them. <laughs> Okay, so this is the 2017 MMBAs, and I know for a fact, probably my biggest cringiest moment lies in this video. Okay, let me set the scene a little bit. I can see KJ Appa's red fiery hair from here. For context, Riverdale had just come out maybe like a month or two prior, and like there was so much hype, and it was just like the biggest thing. So it was a big deal that KJ Appa was coming to the MMBAs, and I was also super pumped to interview him. I was a fan, and mm, a not good moment. I also remember just like feeling so good and on my game. I was so prepped for every single person that year. Alessia Cara was the host that year with Joe Jonas. And I remember like I loved my hair. I thought my makeup came out good. I was like loving my outfit. I also, oh my gosh, I feel like I've shared this story before. This was the night when I was very, very generously gifted. Not gifted, let me correct. Gifted on loan. I was loaned a couple of pieces of jewelry from David Yurman. And I think I had $25,000 worth of jewelry on me between like the real earrings and I had this giant ring that was like all real diamonds and stones and I was honestly a little terrified to be wearing it because I've never put anything that expensive on my body and I was so afraid that like I was gonna get it stolen or I don't know it was this whole process but I was feeling like a million bucks and so on the game and I was just so pumped to be on the carpet so I have really really fond memories of this. Sierra, how are you feeling about it? I feel excited but nervous of course naturally. Well you've always got such a cool calm collected vibe so to contrast that we're gonna do a quick rapid fire round of beauty questions. Ooh, okay. Ready? Yes. Okay. Okay. Brown or mascara? Ooh, mascara. Blush or bronzer? Mm, bronzer. True Canadian gal, super down to earth, and is super nice. Have I said this? I can't remember if I'm repeating myself or not, but these interviews were done with MTV Fora, which is kind of like the beauty and lifestyle part of MTV. So again, we had a lot of beauty-based questions, and not that that's like a cop-out, but again, it made me feel not lower pressure, but again, it keeps things light-hearted and not too intense. So again, was feeling good. This is all to like build up the hype from the moment where things do not go good, and it all starts with KJ Appa. MBAs. Why am I talking like that? Nervous for. Yeah. To be honest, I was probably most nervous for coming here, coming out of the car, because you sit there for a long time and you're thinking, what's going to happen? So. Have the Canadian fans been treating you nice? Yeah, it's, it's been great. It's been great. Really Thank fun. you. Oh my god, wait, I cut it out of this version. Of course I would. Okay, it is on the internet. We are going to open a new tab. That is so funny. I cut it out right before it happened. Wow, there's so much suspense for this. I definitely put it in the vlog because, you know, I needed to keep it real with you guys, the real ones who watch the vlogs. And I definitely included an extended cut of that interview. Oh my god, that's so funny that I cut it out. Um, KJ Appa MMBA vlog. What is this video? called. Oh, this is it. This video is called The Most Tragic Moment of My Life featuring Riverdale's KJ Appa. <laughs> That was the reality check that I needed that night. I, I really did. I, I, it was going so good and then I just had to 
You know what, to be fair, if I can defend myself, I was holding a mic in my one hand and then he went to shake with the hand that I would have needed the mic. So then it was, half of the blame is on KJ. I'm just gonna say it. That was not entirely my fault, but that was definitely a bad moment. Okay, How are you? I'm doing one. You are the one to do the beauty and fashion, by the way. Sometimes I have people interview me and they're like, so what are you wearing? I'm like, you don't care. But you obviously know what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Wow, Kat is just being an angel as usual. People, I have to say that night, I feel like people were being particularly nice to me and it was like truly just making me feel so great. It was boosting my ego for sure. But no, it's always really nice when people are just like go out of their way to be extra sweet. That always lets me feel way more comfortable and thank you, Kat. Oh, okay, now this is a funny moment. I can see this is Shay Mitchell coming up next. And I think I even exposed myself here in this video and you know what, let's just watch, let's just watch. Hey, it's uh, just me again. I just wanted to pop in here and give you a little bit more context as to what's going on. So basically, I was expecting to interview Shay Mitchell next, which I was super excited about. I had my questions all prepped and ready to go for her. So I was telling the camera a story about how when I was 13 years old, I went to the MMBA as a fan and tried to get her autograph. Um, as I was telling this story, I was brought over Martha Hunt instead, which I was not expecting at all. I was super excited to interview her, but the schedule kind of got switched and she just got brought over unexpectedly. And I was just so not prepared for it. So you can see it in my eyes. She gets brought over and I'm like, uh-oh, what is going to happen? But you just got to roll with it. A solid five years ago, I was standing over there on my friend's shoulder as a fan, reaching to get her wristband. Hi, Jacqueline. So nice to meet you. We're with MTV Bora. We're going to talk a little bit of beauty and fashion. Are we good to go? Awesome. <laughs> Honestly, if you take anything away from this video, fake it till you make it. That is the motto. Just watching me turn on like my telephone voice and going from telling this like story about Shay Mitchell five years ago and then, hello, Jacqueline Forbes. Like it's just, it's funny. So we're so excited to talk a little bit of beauty with you because no red carpet or big carpet is complete without supermodel skin and supermodel makeup talk. So funny story about Martha, actually. She was super lovely. We were just chatting like makeup and I don't think there's anything particularly cringy to report other than that horrific intro that I did. But story about her, probably, this would have been maybe a year ago. A year ago at um, New York Fashion Week, we were at some after party and we ended up getting in the same elevator together. And I was like, oh, hey Martha, like my name's Jacqueline. I actually interviewed you years ago at the MMBAs for this MTV thing. And she was like, oh my gosh, yes, I remember you doing the makeup questions and whatever. And she was super sweet. Just, oh wow, nice people people are just shout out to you Martha you were very nice okay let's go back to the main interview and see if there's any other cringy things to report as I skim through this is why I just got renewed for season two can you spell any secrets no so that's really how we're getting up. I'm so sorry so with Justin's character what do you want to see develop over this next season if you could write it if I could write it yeah. I mean obviously because I'm the actor playing and I'd love for him to just be this wholesome dude that comes back I just love Brandon Flynn so much he is a pure human. I hope that he lives in the truth he's supposed to live and that the path makes sense of whatever happens. Well, I'm so excited to see where the story goes. Okay, next up, I think we've got Dove Cameron here. And oh my gosh, I remember actually this day in particular, it was so hot outside. And if you can't tell from like the video, this actually happens like literally outside of the Much Music building on like the street of Toronto. They shut it down, it's super cool. And it's like so Toronto energy, like I can't explain it, it's just so cool. But you're outside, it's not tented. And it was so hot that day, like very, very hot. We're talking easily 30 degrees of just beaming sun on you. And I remember Dove was in this like really thick, beautiful, like full sleeve dress. And she was like, I'm sweating so much. And like was just a hot human, understandably so, as was I. It was actually funny. I remember I kept asking the camera woman because like I, I obviously don't have anyone there to touch up my makeup. But I was like, am I sweating if I need to blot? And like I had brought like blotting papers with me. So I was like, what if I do this? And I'm just like a hot mess, you know, just trying to wear all the hats. First for the MFBAs. I'm really into it. I definitely think the color has vibes. Yeah. Like it brings a different energy, right? And you're wearing pink. I have good vibes. Girl, I knew. I didn't know. I didn't know, but it's like my night's made. It's so, uh, it, it's creating a very happy energy, especially with all the balloons and everything. Yeah, despite the rain, which has been holding on. We want to talk a bit about pink things. Pink food, what's your favorite one? My favorite pink head. food, uh, raspberry macaroons from Lotteray. That was so good. So good. I was just in Paris, so that's like all I'm thinking about anyway. Amazing. Oh. Well, we're so excited to have you here. Thanks so much for chatting with us. Thank have a wonderful you night. for having me. My, your makeup is just oh. smashed. Oh. She's smashed. 
She's so sweet. What the heck? Yeah, she's just like, you can tell she's been doing interviews for so long and she's like such a Disney kid and like is so, just so incredible at doing interviews. Wow. Niall Horan is in the house. He's in the house. <laughs> I am like the biggest One Direction fan, you guys know this. So I remember as we're doing these interviews, I was like, Niall Horan is getting interviewed right beside us. Like, how do we make him for sure come over here? So I was like trying to flag him over, um, but he got pulled right after he finished up with the people beside us. But I was like, this is all of my life flashing before my eyes. Like Niall Horan is right there. Funny story that I don't think I actually even included in the vlog of that video, but Inside the building at the party once the show had started, I actually had run into him and I was like, wow, this is like 14 year old Jacqueline is not doing okay. Fashion faux pas with this. Fashion faux pas is not feeling comfortable in your own skin. You gotta embrace your body. It's perfect the way it is. Love that. You can make a hashtag for tonight. For this moment, what would your personal hashtag be? Bow to Carly Rae Jepsen. Hashtag bow to Carly Rae Jepsen. She's everything. Honestly, gotta give a huge shout out to Tyler Oakley. I feel like Tyler was one of the YouTubers at the time that really helped pave the way. And he kind of hopped over onto traditional media and would do interviews, would do some talk shows. And I don't know, I just, I really gotta give props to him because I feel like he was in that first kind of batch of YouTubers that helped YouTubers get a name outside of just YouTube, if that makes any sense. That was super cool to interview him. She's truly my queen. And she's right there. Are you dying? Are you okay? If you'd like to feel my heart, it is fluttering. Sure, like, when I saw her, I was, I, this is my now. <laughs> That's incredible. We also gotta know, if you can pick an emoji to describe this second. Fire. The fire emoji. It's hot in here, it's humid in here, everyone's beautiful. Please, no one ever let me ask that question again. I'm gonna, you know, give myself some credit. It was 2017, this was, you know, years ago, but use an emoji to sum up how you're feeling. I can do better, I can do better. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Queen Kiki is next. Kiki Palmer, she is incredible. Okay, we've got to talk a little bit about purple. We love your love going on. Talk, walk us through. So, love you. So pretty much I dyed my hair and I... That is the perfect representation of the red carpet. There's like fans behind being like, Kiki, Kiki, everyone's just like yelling. It is honestly, it doesn't even seem as loud as it is because obviously there's a microphone catching our audio, but there is so much noise. There's music playing and the fans screaming. Like shout out to everyone that I interviewed for staying focused because I don't know how you do because it's just, it's a lot to digest. And lastly, before we head off, we gotta know what's your song in the summer? Mm, my song in the summer is Wanda by Kiki Palmer featuring oh, Quavo. Me too, what a surprise. Well, thank you so much for popping by. Have an amazing night. You're beautiful. Oh, thank you, you as well. See, people were just on a really nice wave that evening. Like, Kiki, again, made my night. Oh my gosh, how could I forget that I interviewed The Grimes? Do you have any secrets for the summer makeup that's lasting all night? Uh, I usually smear some stuff on my lips. That's all you really need. But it's like already sweating off and it's like in my hair, I think. This weather, with the rain, you can't do anything. Yeah. If you had to describe this weekend in one hashtag, MMBA weekend, what would you hashtag it? Um, uh, pink carpet. There was a moment I for sure cut out of this edit, LOL. Okay, I remember I asked Grimes. I think she was kind of pulled in and I don't think anyone had briefed her on like what we were even asking. So to be fair, I don't think she even knew what she was walking into. But yeah, like I said, we were doing mainly beauty and like makeup fashion kind of questions. And I think the first thing I had asked her was like three go-to makeup products or something like that for the summer. And she's like, I, I don't really wear makeup. And I was like, okay. And then in my head, all I could think about, cause I was so in like the routine of like asking, like I had probably like five go-to to makeup-y or lifestyle-y beauty questions. I was like, okay, I need to think of something else that's not now a makeup question. And I remember in that moment, I was like, I, I don't know what else to say. She, she doesn't like wear much makeup. She doesn't really want, not that she didn't want to talk about it, but like she clearly didn't have much to say about makeup. And I remember I was like, I don't know what else to say. So I don't even know where these questions came from. Uh, okay, moving on. Next up, I have this interview here with Fletcher, which I for sure know that we had a blooper in this video. So we were talking actually about her alter ego and there was this funny story that she was sharing about her label not recognizing her name and then so she has this alter ego and whatever. So that was part of the story. And then this happens in the interview. Just like eat good food and be with people that I feel like the most oh. <laughs> Karen Fisher. Stay in. Yeah, that was some Karen Fisher energy for sure. <laughs> I remember we could kind of hear something 
scurrying behind us and it turns out our little our little backdrop fell down. That was funny. She was super chill about it. Okay, next up I'm gonna go to Lennon Stella's interview. I remember I was so hyped for this. I am actually a huge Lennon Stella fan. I think she I just like love her music. That is totally my genre, my style, what I like to listen to. So I was pumped to interview her. And as soon as I met her, she again, she just has that personality that makes you instantly feel like you're best friends with her. She makes you feel very like welcomed and comfortable. And I think it's always great, especially in more of like a one-on-one -on -one interview like this. That always just helps the flow of the interview if it feels way more conversational. Nobody likes a very like sterile and super formal um, interview, especially when you're talking about more topical and fun and fun things. I just am such a like whole body that just literally being in my actual home like I'm okay with like being away from Nashville but actually I remember for this interview when she had walked into the studio I was like oh my god we're coordinated I remember I had bright red um like booty heels on and she had like black and red outfit and I had like a black and red outfit as well and funnily enough I actually had interviewed her Did I interview oh no no I was hosting um about like a fast forward a year later um she was back in Toronto doing like this little session with Sony Music and she had like this little like contest with fans and she came and did some acoustic sets so I was moderating the whole event and I had met up with her before obviously the whole event started I was like hey nice to see you again kind of thing and no word of a lie we were coordinated again we were wearing like the same leather pants and like I think we both had like a white shirt on and anyway so now it is a running theme apparently that works out great though actually when someone that you're interviewing especially if it's just like a two shot like it's nice if you like visually go together but you never know what someone's gonna wear so it actually ended up working out first concert you ever went to Applebee. Wait, save? Yeah. No way. Toronto. Yes. Yes, at the ACC? I actually am not even sure, but probably. I must have been like six or so. Like it was Me too, but I... Oh. Wow, we were probably Wait. in the same show. No, honestly, I wonder. I, I, I must have been... I must have been like... Maybe I was younger than that, honestly. Yeah. But it was the one where like the... It was the theme like of like devil horns. Yes, and I have light up devil horns. That was her Yes. Voice. No, wait, that's so weird. Because my mom... Wait, let me just tell you the story. Like, <laughs> I know you probably don't think No, I won't. Literally... My mom put my hair in these little buns, like not knowing. She just right. put my hair in these two buns that look like devil horns. And then I go in and everyone's wearing these devil horns and everyone's like, what is happening? This is so weird because if my hair literally looked like it was right. on purpose, but obviously I had no idea. Wait, that was so the funny. best moment of my life. I walked in and everyone was like, you're yeah, Alan Bean's sister. I was like, no, I just. Yeah, I knew. I was a trans. Yeah, exactly. It was too funny. And then I so begged crazy. my mom to buy them. She, they were like, probably like 40 bucks for these oh, little plastic ones. Yes. I was like, Mom, and I they light up. up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so good. I love it. Oh, that was such a cute moment. Honestly, that was so funny. It is always weird looking back though, because it makes me wonder. I'm like, oh, am I like being too casual? It's hard though in moments like that. Like it's such a human, like relatable moment. I don't know. It's interesting though. Sometimes I'm like, oh, am I like showing my age too much? Am I coming off too young? And not that, I mean, I think I'm a year older than Lennon. I actually find it super fascinating to always watch myself back after interviews and see like the final cuts and stuff. It helps me like, it's a learning experience. Sometimes I'll watch something I'm like, oh, I was way too like, I was moving way too much in the interview. It looked too distracting and, and like little things like that that I do try to take away. I don't know, but it's honestly, it's moments like that that I love and that's kind of like, I don't know, like not to sound cheesy, but that actually is, I kind of feel like why I love this type of stuff. Like I love connecting with people and it just, that that's what feels good. And I feel like that's the most exciting to watch as well as a viewer, so. Okay, let's move on. We've got Sabrina Carpenter here. Hey everyone, it's Jacqueline Forbes. Today I'm here with Sabrina Carpenter. What's up? Welcome, welcome. Thank you. This video, I can already see see by the setup we were sitting so close to each other we were on two little stools and we were in again quite a small room and I, the way that the shot was set up they're like can you guys get closer together like I swear we were like literally on top of each other you know whatever looks good for the shot I know you love a good throwback Disney you're a huge Miley Cyrus fan yeah. she's also a member of Miley World so I get it what yeah I'll whoa I'll I had no. to get the pre-sale code so I could go to the concert I don't meet lots of people that were like Miley World oh no members. truly I was a, like Well, 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 well. That's what I was singing. 
We could talk about Miley World all day. Do you guys know what Miley World is? That was my youth. But no, Sabrina was super sweet. I remember that interview was super fun. Okay, so this is the 2018 iHeartRadio MMVAs. This was probably the most hype built up ever. This was like definitely a huge deal for me, especially at that time. Basically, my co-host, Michael Ritzy, who was amazing and was a great co-host that night, we were doing the live stream, the red carpet fashion feed with MTV Fora at the iHeartRadio MMVAs in 2018. And we were live, like live, no cuts, no edits, for about two hours. And that was the only point of stress for that because no, there was just no edits. Like there was no room for error. We had so many rehearsals and were prepped so well on all the different guests and I felt really good going into it. But again, it's the MMBAs. You can have a lineup of people who you think you're gonna get in a certain order and then things can change, schedules can change. All of a sudden, the next person who you're supposed to get, basically for context, behind the camera, like when I'm looking at the camera, like doing the whole bit, there's producers behind the camera and they have a whiteboard and they will write the name of the artist who is supposed to be coming on next and they'll basically time it for us and like give us like a warning when to like wrap up and when to get the new artist to come in. Hopefully all while looking effortless and smooth and, and all things are good. But like I said, there'll be times when we'll have a name up on a whiteboard and then all of a sudden you turn to your left and someone new is brought to you and you're like, one, maybe I don't know who you are. Or like there was a few situations where people had come on and I was like, we were not prepped for you. Like I didn't even know you were gonna be here tonight. So, you know, things can change last minutes and that's the beauty of something like this. You just have to be totally okay with rolling with punches so let's see what what punches were thrown yeah. now michael we are at the 2018 i heard already mmbas this is not your first mmbas this is not my first mmbas i want to hear one crazy story what has happened last year two years ago tell me something crazy oh, okay so let's see <laughs> We are totally stalling here. That's so funny. I think we had started and we were told like we were supposed to be getting artists right away. Like we had a little intro that we were going to say. It was like five minutes longer than we were supposed to go on. And we're like, where is everyone? But we couldn't stop. Like we were on, right? So we just kept on spitballing and like rolling off each other. And I think it totally worked. But you can tell we're both like just, we're completely winging it. <laughs> wow. We got some more guests coming up. We got Halsey. Am I, am I getting Halsey just won an award? Halsey just won an award? The show hasn't even started and Halsey's already won an award. Okay, so Halsey, you're already winning in our book, so maybe that best dress will be yours as well. Oh, I can just like feel my energy through the video of how excited I was. We were also handing out the award for best dress of the evening, which was super fun. So yeah, that added like a whole other layer. I have to say, it's been so inspiring. I've been watching you on America's Next Top Model for literally my entire childhood and life. And I feel like it's really, um, been so important to see such a confident and powerhouse woman be the lead of that. So uh, I of course have to ask for some tips. I gotta learn about smizing, the booty too. Can you walk us through? We've been taking Polaroids all night and we would love to learn from the queen the yeah. posing tips. We'll start with booty tooch. Okay. Booty tooch. And, and for a guy, it's a booch. Okay. Okay, so it's a booty booch, not booty. a tooch. Okay, so bend your knees. Okay, bend the knees. Tuck your tummy in. Put uh, your uh, booty out. Oh, yes. booty tooch. How do you do both? Tooch. How do you do both? Pop it out. Okay, okay. pop. Got it. Yep. And then yep. for a guy, you don't bend your knees at all. Oh, no, 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 no bending. No bending. And then just got it. Push the booty out. Just a little, but no bending of the knees. It's a little harder. Let's inhale. Amazing. Yes, one, two. Oh my gosh, wow, getting Tyra to teach me how to booty tooch and smize definitely checked off on the bucket list. I remember that day actually, despite being so excited, I remember I like had just gotten my period that morning. I was feeling so like bloated and just like gross. But you know what? Learning the proper techniques to booty tooch and smize, it, it got things it got things okay again, you know? So Layla wants us to tell five sauce that she says hi. Uh, and Layla, on sky. It. LOL, me just chugging a water bottle on camera. It got to the point, I was trying to like not, but I was like, guys, I need water if I'm gonna keep going. Task five sauce, if they could rule. Hello, hello. Oh, all right. Come on in. Right. We're Come on They're in. actually yeah. live right now the great. MTV for a fashion. Oh gosh, don't swear. Okay, good. I mean, live your best life. Yeah. That is a perfect example of how it happens. We're in the middle of like talking and then they'll be like, we have someone else ready, go on. And like, it just, it's an ongoing thing, right? Major LOL. Okay, we've got BB Rexa here. I definitely know for a fact, I stepped on her toes with my heels at some point. Oh my God, I remember I felt so bad. I think it was at the beginning too. Like it just set the tone and I was like, I'm sorry. I am a monster. It's when we took the photo, I think. Oh, LOL. 
well. Definitely just like stiletto on her toe. She played it off so well. What we were doing all night, we were taking like Polaroids with everyone as well, which was super cool to have those like little like memories as well. But yeah, definitely just stomped on her foot. So sorry, BB. I'm sorry. Thank you for being nice about it. Um, it's been, all right, I'm just gonna take the mic, you know? Um, I mean, you know, this whole... Honestly, it is the scariest feeling to let go of that mic. I could not explain it. I think there was another moment too. I think we had finished our little interview with the boys, but they were still kind of like waiting around. Oh, right, this is it. This is funny. The audience is going crazy. They're yelling, they're screaming. The energy is incredible. Are we still live? Yeah, we're still live. Hello. <laughs> Okay, so we finished our like interview with Five Sauce. We're like, okay, bye, whatever. They go to walk off, but it was also like a weird point at the red carpet where like they weren't ready for them to actually go inside the building yet. So they could have like whatever, taken pictures with fans or whatever. But they were just kind of standing there awkwardly. So then Callum and Michael come back over and he like took my mic again. And at one point, I think he tries to take my, my cue cards, but I'm like, no, like I was like, those cue cards are everything. That's where I have every artist, everyone prepped. I'm like, if I lose those, that is like my lifeline. I can't get rid of that. So then at one point he tries to take them and I'm like, no, you're not taking that. The microphone is enough. I mean, you, um, can, you, know, you can join, join in. Let me see some of these. All right, here we go. Is she, has she already been here? <laughs> It's funny too, watching it back, it doesn't seem like a big moment. In real life though, there was like, he's pulling it this way. I'm like, nope, I'll take it back. And he's trying. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, really big. I'm a big person as well. You're very believable, Sean. You know what I say, roll with the punches. Also, I don't know if you just noticed in my eye, I was just told off camera by the producer that they actually had won the most votes for the best dressed award. Their fans were going crazy on the live stream that night. What do I say? Love a band, fandom, energy. Um, so they ended up winning. So she was like, hey, here's the award. They're winning, give them the award. So again, just like, okay, let's present them the award. I'm gonna stop taking over this. Um, actually, Michael, you have to stay here you because you've got some awards happening here. You need to go get your Twitter band members right now. There's some, there's some serious stuff Wrangle happening. Wrangle the band members. <laughs> They're so confused. They're like, what's happening? We, we're done with their interview. <laughs> Congratulations. I think everyone, has everyone won this? No. Oh gosh, okay, that's enough of that moment. You can see at the end, I'm like, we're so excited slash exhausted though. It was so much high energy. Okay, and I think with that, that is going to conclude all of the interviews that we watched. Oh wow, it's, it's so fun going down memory lane for sure. Um, like I said, I do try to take every moment as much as I can laugh at myself or be critical. I do really think each interview, each experience is such a learning experience. And it definitely is kind of, it's cool for me to see back from my very first interview, fast forward to now where I feel super comfortable and, you know, much more in tune with things that I want to be conscious of or ways to improve. And it's nice to actually be able to have all of that progress documented. And it's also, yeah, it's just so much fun. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Like I said, I will link all of the interviews and in like my interview playlist. So if you want to watch any of the interviews, see who I've interviewed, any of that fun stuff, you can go check it out. I'll have that in the description box down below. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, leave a comment, subscribe, thumbs up, like, follow, do all the things you guys know. And I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.